Hello, self-lovers. It's Katie here, the founder of the School of Self-Love. For those of you who are brand new for these live trainings, it's so wonderful to be with you. I'm just going to give you all a moment to uh, join the call because I know there's quite a few people that want to jump on today. I've already had some gorgeous messages. So let's see who can join me live and I'll have a sip of tea while I'm waiting for you. I'll wait for you guys to start showing up. You're not joining yet. I'll tell you what I'll do while you guys are joining. Those of you who are brand new, oh, here you are, guys. You're joining. I can see you. Good stuff. Hi, hi, hi. Welcome, welcome, beauties. It's good to see you. I've got hair flowing through the screen. Um, Tina, you're back. Hello, my darling. It's good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Let me know who you are as you join and let me know where in the world you're calling from because it's wonderful. Jean's back. Hello, Dallin. You guys are regulars. This is awesome. I love your commitment. Helen, you too. Another committed lady. I'm loving it. I'm loving it, loving it, loving it. So um, I was just about to, uh, you know, kill some time while you guys joined and introduced myself a little bit to the newbies who are joining. The Self Love Hub is becoming quite a beautiful little space, actually. You're welcome, Tina. Uh, we've got lots of new ladies joining, so um, I do feel like I need to kind of say hello to, to those that haven't been on these uh, live trainings before. We are now kind of a third of the way through the teachings of this book, The Self-Love Affair. So this is a book I wrote a few years ago. Um, I guess it was published about two summers ago. And uh, yeah, the weekly trainings we're doing now are literally week by week. I'm taking you through the book chapter by chapter. So it's a little bit like a uh, like a book club. Um, and we're kind of diving deep into each subject. And we're about a third of the way. And as I've said before, so Tina, Helen, Jean, anybody else on the call that hasn't introduced themselves yet. Um, as you know, as I've been saying, the first third of the book is pretty heavy duty. Uh, it is all about awareness creation. You know, when you decide to go on a journey of transformation, which is exactly what this is, it's a transformational journey. And it's a very deep inner journey. It's about really, really getting to grips with who you are and really deeply knowing yourself and falling in love with that woman. So the first third of the book is about getting to know who on earth this woman is and what makes her tick and why is she? Why are you experiencing life the way that you are? Why does it feel the way it feels? Why do you feel the way you feel? Why do you think and believe what you think and believe? And in particular, we're very focused on the stuff that isn't serving you, you know, on the stuff that is making you feel less than perfect, not good enough, comparing yourself to others. You've got that kind of mental gymnastics going on. I had a client once refer to her, the mental gymnastics in her head as um, as a, the terrorist in her skull, which I'll never forget her saying that. And I thought, oh my God, that is just so well put. And I'm using that in my marketing material. And I have. Uh, she should have copyrighted it. <laughs> um, yeah, the terrorist in her skull. And that's how it feels. And, and so if you've got that noise in your head, if you've got the emotional yo-yoing going on, if you feel like you're not in charge of your own emotions, if you feel like you're a small child and often kind of whether internally or externally kind of tantruming out of control, all this stuff that has you feel like you haven't mastered yourself, you haven't mastered your mind and you haven't mastered your emotions. We, in the first third of this book, we're getting to grips with why that is, why exactly you think and feel the way you do. And I've said it so many times and I will never cease saying it. It is for the brave woman that day is to dig deep into itself because it can be really painful. It can hurt so, so much. It can bring up a lot of shame, a lot of embarrassment, um, a lot of very hard to deal with emotions. And, and I really do need to say this to you again, if you're hearing it for the first time perhaps, or if you've heard me say it before, but it's not sunk in. You don't have to do this work on your own. Like some of this work really opens up wounds that really need support. Okay, so please don't feel like you need to do this alone. Whether you go to see your doctor or a therapist or hire a coach 
or join one of our School of Self Love coaching programs. Journey with a friend, perhaps at least have that one person, that touchstone to hold each other accountable, to keep an eye on each other. You know, you don't have to do this alone. Some of the work that this is calling you to do. And again, it really depends on how deep you desire to go. Like you only go as deep as you're willing to go. Just you need to just trust yourself. And I know when you're desiring to know and love yourself, sometimes self-trust is one of the hardest things. So it seems really counterintuitive to say that. But you got to do your best. Trust your best is good enough in terms of trusting yourself that you will go as deep as you need to go. And you will do what you know that you can do on your own in terms of creating the awareness that the exercises in the first third of this book particularly take you through. And if at any point it doesn't feel safe for you or good for you, if you feel just a little bit too wobbly, a little if it feels just a little bit too scary, if you don't feel supported, then it is such a powerful act to call for support. To, to reach out to somebody and just start somewhere reach out to a friend first okay but just reach out at any point if you don't feel safe in doing any personal development work my process anybody else's process you have got to take self-responsibility and reach out so that's that's kind of the waiver uh, I think it's really important to remember that and 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 I say it also because I also believe and I experience this in my own personal life, that um, the deepest, deepest healing and transformation comes when you are witnessed. There's something really amazing about doing the work for yourself. I mean, nobody else can do transformational, deep healing work except for you. Only you can do the work. Nobody can do it for you. But having somebody witness it with you, to really see you and hear you, it, there's something about that, that the, the catalyst of you doing the work and then it being witnessed, it's incredibly, incredibly powerful. And it speeds up the transformation. And it, I believe, helps you to really kind of embody the transformation and almost believe that it happens. But, you know, energetically, as we witness each other, the first step is to witness yourself. That's what this journey is about. You must witness yourself. But to allow somebody else to witness you and preferably somebody that is very healed and solid in, in this work. They've done the work before. You know, they've got the T-shirt and they're in a very powerfully solid place to be able to support you and witness you and really hold the space for you. It will speed up your transformation. It will make it feel much safer to go where you need to go it will make it feel more real and yeah it's just a catalyst for a really immense amazing change so kind of that just came out I felt like I had to say that today uh, another message from Tanya hi Katie I'm Tanya from Norway Slovenia awesome hello darling it's good to have you you're new I think unless you've been watching behind the curtains and just peeping out every now and then but it's nice to actually meet you thank you for joining um so guys, today I, I've, I've noticed that most of my um, lessons each week have been almost like an hour on the on the nose, and uh, I never realised that they would be as long as that. Um, but I do feel like people are getting great value, which is why you keep coming back, right? Um, and I'm really glad to be of service in that way, and I really really enjoy the teachings and trainings. I don't think today will be that long. Um, but let's just see. And it also depends on your questions. If you have any questions for me today, then um, you know that you can just type them in and I will absolutely address them for you. Uh, what do I want to start with today? Because I feel like as much as I feel like this lesson today is going to be a little more brief, it holds a lot, a lot, a lot of power and and I can feel the energy in me and I'm actually... In a way, I think the preamble just now is allowing it to what needs to be said to drop in. Uh, I can kind of feel the message for today dropping in so that I can share it with you from a place of real, real authenticity and and real power. Because although it's a short and sweet message today, it's probably the most powerful message out of the whole book. Um, because today is talking about the truth of you. Today's today's subject is introducing 
who you really are. And those of you who've been following the teachings all the way through probably already know the answer to that. I kind of hope it's come through. For those of you who are new, this is this is totally new information. Um, or, or not, depending on your background and, and what you've studied and learned so far. But here's my truth. And, and you totally get to take this or leave it. But this is my truth. And this information is what 100% guides me in my life. And I can feel the tears coming because this is how powerful this is. I knew this was going to be a powerful call today. This is what changed my life, this realization. So I'm, I'm 43 years old now. When I was, I'm just trying to think how old I was. I guess I must have been, it must be 10 years ago. Yeah. So I would have been 33, 34. And it was at that point that I realized I wasn't alone in the world. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, darling. Um, I wasn't alone in the world. It took me 33, 34 years to realize that who I thought I was was a lie. <laughs> that the way I had been conditioned by society, what I the way I had been totally led by fear in my life had me think that I was something, okay, I thought I was human. That's it. That's it. That's all I thought I was. I thought I was skin and bones and I was my appearance with my blonde hair and my, you know, five foot 11 height. And, and I thought I kind of got lucky there with the blonde hair and the height. You know, I thought, well, that's good. That's lucky. I genuinely thought I was lucky in life. I thought that's it all boiled down to luck and all we were was human and some people got lucky and some people didn't. Like, I didn't get so lucky in the parental stakes, not that they didn't love me and not that I had an abusive childhood or anything like that. I was a very, very deeply loved child. And there was stuff going on that... um had me feel not loved, had me feel not safe, had me feel abandoned. Um, and, you know, I didn't think I was lucky because my mum killed herself when I was 22. So that didn't feel very lucky to me. I didn't feel very lucky that my dad was an alcoholic and, and his attention was regularly elsewhere because of that. I didn't feel very lucky because we didn't have a lot of money. Um, I, I thought I... You know, like I thought that all I was was just human. I thought all we were was human and some people drew the lucky straw and some people didn't. I thought I wasn't lucky when it came to my emotions. Like I was a train wreck emotionally, but very privately, nobody knew. Very privately, I suffered quite, well, major anxiety and on and off bouts of depression, uh, but nobody knew. And I just kind of thought I was unlucky. Uh, I was lucky because I was intelligent and bright. I was lucky because I knew how to show up really well in the corporate world and I had great jobs. Uh, I was lucky because I I kind of had the wherewithal and the nous to, to sort of decide what I wanted to do with my life. And, you know, if I wanted to go travel the world, I would figure it out and I'd find the money and I would go travel the world. You know, I, if I wanted to go climb Kilimanjaro, I would go climb Kilimanjaro, which I did. If I, you know, like if I wanted to create life experiences for myself, I felt like I was a lucky human because something in something within me kind of knew how to figure that out and go do it. So it looking a lot of boxes, keeping up a lot of appearances, like it looked like I I had a clue and I knew what was going on. And my dirty little secret was that, you know, I was unlucky emotionally, but I was able to kind of and by the way, I didn't even know I was doing this until until I did and I could witness it that, you know, I was hiding that part of me, the very, very vulnerable part of me, the very scared part of me, super anxious part of me that felt like she was completely, utterly fucking alone in the world. I felt so alone in the world. And I kind of thought 
that we all were alone in the world. But those that didn't seem to be particularly alone, they were lucky because their luck was that they had lots of friends and family and connection and that deep, that deep connection with other humans that I didn't feel lucky in. I didn't kind of get that experience, I thought. So I thought we were just skin and bones and human and lucky or unlucky, and that was it, which, you know, that's not very fulfilling, is it? And and I didn't know until I did. And then, hi, Karina from Long Beach. Gorgeous, gorgeous to have you, darling. Um, oh, Long Beach. Oh, gosh, wouldn't, oh, I would love to be there right now. <laughs> um, and when I realized that <laughs> I'm human second, first, I am a spiritual being. I have a soul. I have a spirit. And and that they aren't just lovely words. You know, I grew up, we all hear it, you know, we hear that, you know, you've got to live live the truth of your soul, or you know, you're you hear things like when you die, your spirit leaves you, or you know, we hear stuff, we hear these words soul and spirit. We hear them. There's a magazine called Soul and Spirit. There's 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 conferences around soul and spirit. Um we hear the words, but they were just kind of nice, fluffy words to me. They didn't hold any real meaning to me. And I can't remember exactly the moment that I knew that I had a spiritual self. It was, it was part of my personal development journey. I did a lot, a lot of different things. I hired coaches. I did um, pers deep personal development retreats. I, you know, I did a lot of work. And and maybe it was a slow drip. But I remember a period of time when I was about 35, 36, where I, I really woke up to this truth that I'm a spiritual being and I am, as a result, I'm utterly perfect. And everybody is. The truth of who we are is just such a beautiful, beautiful expression of love. And our, our work here as humans is to every single day choose to be that and choose to connect to that part of us. And it's a real challenge being human. It's a real challenge to connect to that true part of you that is pure love here on this planet because it is not designed for us to be spiritual. It's designed for us to be human. And, and there's a purpose to that. It's so that we, and I, I'm pretty sure I touched on this last week's call, or perhaps it was the week before, you know, it's designed so that we have that contrast. Our spiritual selves, like when we're, and like, I don't know what it looks like, but there's just paint of a, a pretty fluffy picture of, you know, at, when we're all spiritual, we're, living in a you know <laughs> living on clouds and everything's pure love and rainbows and unicorns and it's just all soft and fluffy and yummy pure 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 love but when that's all there is how do you deepen that how do you go further with that we need contrast to deepen and further our experience of something so and, and again take it or leave it this is my opinion and this is what i live my life by now and um this 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 belief system now gives me daily faith and trust in myself and in the world at large. So hear me out, take it or leave it. Um, but I believe we as spiritual beings chose this human earthly playground for contrast so that we could experience every, everything on the scale between love and all the way down to fear. So you've got love up here, vibrating up here and fear vibrating right down here. And to experience this up here, we, we've got to experience all the different levels between down here and up here. That contrast has us really understand and, and know and all the spiritual beings, we don't understand, we, we feel, we intuit, we just, it's like, a, it's just a deep, deep knowing. We know love we know it more and the more contrast we have the the more we can expand our capacity for love the more expanded contrasts we have the more we can expand our capacity for love the more we can really deeply truly know the truth of who we are and 
And when I came to understand and believe that about myself, I suddenly felt so safe in the world. I suddenly realized I could really trust myself because what was guiding me was the truth of me, my spiritual self. I suddenly felt so much more connected to everything when I realized that we were all in this together. Every single human had chosen this experience to know themselves more. It wasn't just me. And we all had our own challenges. So I might have been lucky in one area, but my neighbor was unlucky in that area. Yeah. Um, when I realized this, and that's why it really brought tears to my eyes a minute ago, you know, it was just so, so utterly life changing. It shifted everything for me. And suddenly this idea of knowing myself and wanting to love myself, it wasn't just like, I don't know how to even put this into words. It wasn't just a um, something that I needed to do. Or, no, it wasn't something I kind of wanted to do. It wasn't a thing. It wasn't like an assignment. It wasn't, um, bear with me, I have to take a breath because I need to feel into what I want to say to you. Um, yeah, so the way I always approached life was it's almost project-based. And this idea of self-development and self-actualization, you know, personal growth. It wasn't just another project for me to do, you know, to read the book and do the exercises and tick it off the list. It, it's not a project. It became my life's purpose. It because forever, regardless of whether I became a coach or an author or a speaker or whatever I ended up doing with it, if I did nothing with it, if I chose not to teach this material and just had it be my own personal experience. It it couldn't just be some project that I did and ticked boxes with. This was deeply, deeply meaningful. It changed, it, it, I knew it would and it went on to and it continues to change the entire landscape of my life, of, of my being, of, of everything. This, it's not, this is not just, <laughs> It's not a tick box. It's a choice to live your life in a wholly different way, entirely different way. And like I've, I always say, you know, it's not for the faint of heart. This is, um, <laughs> I mean, brace yourselves, right? Like if you really, really desire to know and love yourselves, if you really believe this truth that you are a spiritual being and you're here to, to know yourself more through through daily contrast that's thrown at you through your humanness and being of this earth. If you choose that path, holy God, like <laughs> it is not for the faint of heart and you will be called every day to go deeper and deeper into knowing yourself more and healing anything blocking you to being the fullest expression of who you really authentically are, which is ultimately pure love. Yvonne says, hi, Katie, this is so interesting and perfect timing for me. Thank you. You're really, really welcome. Um, you're really welcome. Um, So this isn't just, I guess I want to say this isn't just a lesson I'm teaching as part of the self-love affair process. And, and we take it off our list and we move on to the next lesson. Deciding to connect with the truth of who will utterly change the course of your life completely. It's not a tick box. And I really implore with you and invite you to, in whatever way feels good for you, explore this idea, explore this concept that you are a spiritual being first and foremost. Find teachers who teach on this subject probably far more eloquently than I do, particularly around you being a spiritual being. 
uh, I can't say that I've found the words exactly to express how it feels for me. Probably my tears express how it feels for me because your relationship to your spiritual self, that deeply pure and peaceful and trustworthy and loving part of you, when you have that relationship with you, everything shifts. And I'm not saying there are days when you forget, because there are, and I do. And I'm not saying that there are days where you question it and challenge it, because only yesterday I literally had a moment of thinking, none of this shit works. I did. My humanness came through full ball yesterday at one point, and I thought, nothing I teach, nothing I write, nothing anybody else is teaching me, my own coaches, my own spiritual teachers. No, no, it's all a big joke, I thought yesterday, because I had through my, my <laughs> I was talking to my best girlfriend earlier today. I didn't just throw my toys out of the pram yesterday, that I threw the pram out as well. Everything went yesterday. I had a moment of extreme humanness yesterday, and I felt more deeply than I felt in a very long time, and I feel a lot, and I feel deeply very regularly. I had a I had a powerful and incredibly transformational day yesterday and it put me through my paces and at the end of it I circled back round to oh my god of course I just abandoned myself there for a minute and I forgot the truth of me I didn't feel safe in the world because I forgot the truth of me when we forget the truth of who we are and when we only identify with our humanness and we only identify with this earth and this world and when we only identify with ego, we feel so unsafe and we can't trust anything or anyone and we forget all that we know, all that we've learned. And I've had so many life experiences that have shown me and proven to me that I am a spiritual being. Um, Karina says, OMG, I have that thought come up in my work too. Thank you for expressing it. Yeah, of course. I'd love to know what your work is, Karina. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's human to challenge, right? It's human to be cynical. It's human to, and I, I don't say human in a bad way. I mean, in a good way, in a let's just love and honor that part of us that's human, and we fuck up and we get it wrong and we make mistakes and we fall over and we forget. We forget what we know. Okay, we do. We do it regularly. It's being human. And again, that is, you know, from a spiritual standpoint and perspective, that is what's providing the contrast for us to circle around and remember even more deeply who we are. Karina says, I'm an embodiment mindfulness coach. Yeah, totally, right? <laughs> so we're, yeah, we're on the same page. And of course, and in fact, I think we wouldn't be good coaches and we wouldn't be um, authentic. And there's another word which isn't coming to me right now, but we wouldn't be authentic if we didn't challenge it. I think challenge just has us has us go deeper into, into the, the teachings and into the truth of it. Um, so all that to say, Your relationship with the truth of who you are, your spiritual self, will provide you with a foundation in your life that is unwavering. Even on the days that it wavers, it doesn't go away. It's there. And the more you practice it, the more every single day you practice and you come back to love and you come back to love, every single day you'll get faster and faster and faster at it. So yesterday I had the most almighty meltdown privately at home but a really good meltdown. And I came back so quick, so quick. You know, I spent, I spent the morning, like I went into that the terrorist in my head was a mean bitch yesterday. And I was angry and I was having ruminating conversations with lots of different people. And I got really upset. I got really attached to ego. I felt, I forgot my spiritual truth. I felt that the world was, was teamed against me. I felt isolated. I felt alone. I felt unseen. I felt completely invisible. I genuinely felt like there was some God on a cloud going, nope, you can't have what you want and you can't feel the way that you want to feel. And it's never going to happen for you. 
and stop believing all this stuff that you hear and that your teachers teach you and that you're teaching others. It's a load of shit. That was that was in the morning. <laughs> and by the afternoon, I was like, I'm back. I remember. Because I have that solid, beautiful relationship with me. And and that's never, ever, ever going to go away. And I have spent years honing and developing that beautiful relationship, which is what this journey is all about, which is what I want for you guys. It doesn't happen overnight. It is not, like I was saying, it's not a tick box. This is an absolute commitment to you, yourself, every single day, knowing yourself and loving yourself. Tina, yes, I will tell you how I got back. Okay, cool. Good question. Thank you. Um, to knowing and loving yourself every day. This is the commitment. And as you strengthen that relationship with yourself, you can circle back really quick. And every time you circle back, you will be able to experience love even more. You will be able to experience yourself and love and appreciate and accept yourself even more. You'll become braver with the way you communicate in the world and the way you serve in the world. So I have to keep doing that deep work. I have to keep circling back around. I have to keep, you know, my, it's almost like because I've chosen this line of work, being a self-love coach, the contrast can be huge. And the contrast has to be huge because the expansion of the contrast expands my ability to love and then that expands my ability to serve and speak. So Tina, how did I come back? Well, darling, I followed this. So the this process starts with awareness, right? So I got my journal out and I started to write all the nasty stuff that was ruminating and going around in a circle because I was on a loop with some thinking. So I got the thinking down on paper. I got it out of my head, which was exhausting me and making me angry and upset. Remember, we feel our thinking. So I got it out of my head and I put it onto paper. And then as I wrote, I allowed myself to feel how I felt from the writings. So then I allowed myself to go into emotional expression. I allowed myself to really, really cry, like really cry. And I allowed myself to sit with that emotion for a long time yesterday. Uh, sorry, when I say a long time, a good kind of hour, hour and a half, I spent really with it. I, I wiped my day. because, To be fair, yesterday was a Monday and Mondays are kind of my day. Uh, so this kind of thing often happens to me on a Monday because it's like I've got energetic space for it. Uh, so Mondays are my day to I feel into the day and I do what needs doing. And quite often that's my own personal work, my own my own like reading and uh, journaling and just whatever Katie needs. Katie does on a Monday. Um, and um, well, that said, that's going to probably change because I've just changed my coaching days to Mondays and Tuesdays rather than Thursdays and Fridays. So that could all shift. But we'll see. Maybe Fridays become my my day of emotional expression. Um, by the by, uh, yeah, so that's what I did, Tina. I um, allowed myself to feel it. And as you know, you've been watching the teachings, you know, we have to feel to heal. And as I came out the other side of the feeling, I had to sit with it for a while. Um, I went on to do a few bits and bobs. And the this awareness dropped in for me and reminded me of who I really am. And I had a lot of amazing inspirational kind of downloads. I did a lot of writing and I, you know, it's a whole, it's a big, bigger conversation that I want to have now. But suffice to say, I, my awareness of myself and of my work and uh, of how I'm to be of service in the world expanded just that little bit more. And, uh, and it'll be interesting to see how that continues to evolve. But it was a transformational experience yesterday and it was an up leveling experience. And had I not allowed myself the time and space to process it, go, so to go through the awareness into the emotional expression, then I couldn't have had the, the experience of the, essentially the information that was given to me at the end of that was really, really powerful. And today I'm still in the space of receiving the information and receiving the learning and receiving the teaching that yesterday was about. And I think that receiving that information is going to take a few more days. So I'm still receiving it, if that makes sense. Yeah, you're welcome, Tina. Yeah, absolutely welcome. So what do I want to share with you now? <laughs> she who said this wasn't going to be an hour long teaching. Here we go. Another hour on its way. Um, I want to give you a tool for 
how to connect in with your spiritual self. And if you are reading the book, you can find the chapter. I don't know where it is now. I've lost the page. Where are we at? Page page 87. It's actually, it's called My Spirit, My Truth. It's actually the, um, the first chapter of part two of the book. Um, the tool. Well, look, there's so many different ways that you can connect in with your spiritual self, aren't there? So many different ways. We're all different. My way is going to be different, perhaps, to your way. Uh, just going for a walk on the beach has me feel really connected to myself. Sometimes just being creative and drawing or painting has me feel deeply connected to who I am. As a, I'm a very creative girl. Um, journaling for me is enormously connecting for me. I, I find that when I start writing, I'm so deeply connected to my truth. And it really, you know, it allows me, as I just said to Tina, you know, it allows me to download the ego and the humanness and the fear stories and all the crap. And as I do that, I can drop into my heart and drop into my body. And that from that place, I can forgive, I can heal, I can, I can connect to my emotions and express them, you know, so and and once I can do that, I feel connected to my spirit because before that, when I'm before I start the writing, I'm usually up here in my head and my spirit doesn't live up here. My spirit is in my heart. And the reason this chapter is placed where it is in the book is because the next one. So next week is all around forgiving and forgiveness kind of rounds up the transformational process. So it's awareness, it's emotional expression and then it's forgiveness to forgive. We need to be connected to our heart because that's that's where our capacity for forgiveness lies so we need to to I've, I've placed this piece of information in the book where i have because i want you to be connected to the truth of who you are before you move into forgiveness it also means that you're in a place of self-trust so you're forgiving when you're truly ready to forgive because i really do believe there's a time and a place for forgiveness so yeah connecting to my spiritual self i find journaling a really really powerful tool I think meditation is also a really powerful tool and um, and you've got to find your way. You know, a lot of people will feel spiritually connected when they're exercising, when they're just taking a quiet walk, maybe just oh, actually this is another one for me, just lying in a candlelit bath just has me feel really connected to me. I think it's something about honoring my body and just being silent and allowing my mind to kind of calm. And I intentionally choose to be there for me. And it's beautiful. And you've got to find your own way. But how's about we take, there's a few of you on, so let's do this. Why don't we just take a few minutes now to connect to you? And if you, those of you, some of you might already have my meditation albums, just to, to preface what I'm about to do now. There are a couple of different, two or three different meditations. I've got three meditation albums. If you're interested in them, you can go check them out. I might put the link underneath later. I didn't really think to do this before. So you can you can go over to the school of self dot love. Yeah, the school of self dot love. Go to the shop and then click on meditations and you will see there's three different meditation albums. And there's different ones. Like there's an there's a meditation for opening your heart. Uh, there's 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 a load. Uh, have a look at them. If if it, any of it takes your fancy, then go ahead and you can purchase those there. And there's one meditation on the first album and it's called spirit self oh can you hear the rain starting wow it's really pouring down here um it's called spirit self i'm not going to lead you through that meditation now because it's 15 minutes and i just want to do a quick check in with you another meditation that's that's really powerful is one to check in with all parts of you so we start with checking in with your body and then we move into your um your mind and we move into your emotional self, and then we move to your spiritual self. So we almost kind of get a connection with the three other parts of you, mind, body, emotions, before going into the spiritual self. I wouldn't mind running through that with you now, just super quick. Um, because if I, if I just do that check-in for you now, if we do it together now, we experience it together, it's actually something that you can take away and do on your own. And I do find that once we've checked in with those three other parts before we go and check in with our spiritual self, it has our connection to our spirit feel um, 
a lot more peaceful, a lot deeper because we haven't got the chatter of the other parts of us. So we've kind of made peace with those. So are you up for it? Let me know while I take a sip of my tea. Who's up for doing a quick, how much time we got? Let's just do a quick like 10 minute check in with yourself leading into a spiritual connection. Yes, no, who's going to join me? Let me know if you're going to join me. And then I'll feel like I'm doing it with you guys because I'm going to do, it'll be a closed eye experience. I'm not going to be looking at the camera. I'm going to actually do this with you. As the rain pours down, it's really pouring down. Tina's going to do it. Cool. You're in, Tina. Helen, yep, go for it. You're on, Helen. Anybody else? Who else is up for this? Tanya, hello, I like today's topic. Yes, 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 Karina, yes. Good. Okay, let's do this. Mm -hmm. a nice chance to drink my tea. Okay. <sighs> All right, ladies. Sit comfortably. <clears throat> it's always nice to put your feet on the ground. That said, I don't think it's so bad to sit cross-legged. But I've got my feet firmly on the ground right now. My hands are in this position, palms facing up. If it feels good for you, and I quite—I actually do this just by habit quite often. I just rub the palms of my hands. You might want to do that too. My, my palms are an extension of my heart chakra, so I'm kind of activating and opening my heart chakra, which is nice. Just breathe. Just breathe. And I can feel my energy shifting just through consciously, intentionally having my feet flat on the ground connected to the earth, rubbing my palms together, knowing that I'm about to really connect with me. This, you know, this is very precious, special time. We very rarely do it. So just knowing that, feeling the intention of that, I can feel the energy in me shifting straight away, and I wonder if you can too. <sighs> and when you're ready, just put your hands, palms up on your lap. Lay your palms up because it's like a receiving energy there. And just breathe. And if it feels really good, do a big sigh. I always do a big sigh. <laughs> it just feels good to move the energy even more. <sighs> to know that as I do a big sigh out, I'm just releasing any blocked stagnant energy. <sighs> Anything I'm holding on to from my day so far just gets released. Just do that a few times. <sighs> I find breathing in through my nose and out through my mouth is the most powerful. And make sure that you're breathing all the way down into your belly. You can imagine drawing the air right down into your lower belly, even into your hips. Allow your tummy to really expand. This isn't a time for holding your tummy in tight so you can look as little and skinny as possible. This is a time to really let that belly go. <sighs> let your shoulders relax and drop. And let's start by tuning into your body. <sighs> Just feel how gorgeous it feels to connect with your body. Just set the intention. You're connecting with your body, your beautiful, beautiful physical self, beautiful physical self. Set the intention to love and appreciate your body, even the bits that you don't like so much. How about throwing a little bit of compassion and love to every single part of you, particularly the parts that you give a hard time. Mm. Feel your feet on the ground. 
Just allow yourself to do a body scan. You can start at your toes and just work your way up your body. And as you work away at your way up the body, any tensions or niggles that you feel, just allow them to be released with your out breath. So you're gently breathing in and out and you're scanning from your toes along your feet, up your shins and calves, your knees, the front and back of your thighs. As you're going, you're breathing gently. You're releasing any tensions out through your out breath. You're moving into your bottom, release the muscles, and I just did. It's funny how we clench our bums. Just release those muscles, release your pelvis, release your lower belly, your lower back, moving up to your middle belly and your middle back, moving up across your chest and your upper back any tightness, any niggles, allow it to be released with your out breath. And notice how gorgeous it feels to be sitting more deeply, more energetically present in your body. Moving up into your shoulders, down your arms, all the way down to your forearms, your wrists, your hands, your fingertips. Maybe you can feel your body tingling a little bit now as it's relaxing more and more and you're sinking more deeply into your chair. Keep consciously and intentionally choosing to release any lower vibrational energies, anything that doesn't serve you, any tightnesses, any niggles. Just allow with your breath to relax every muscle and release the blockages through your out breath. Mm, beautiful. And now you're in your, from your, start at your shoulders again, up into your neck. And then swoop up over your head to the back of your head, the top, the crown of your head, across your forehead, your eyebrows. What about the cr little crease, which I have, I have a prominent one right in between my eyebrows. Try and let that relax your eyes, your cheeks, your top lip, your bottom lip, your tongue, your chin, your jaw, the front of your neck. Mm. Allow it all to relax. Allow all the tensions in your face to melt away. Let the lines fade. Just feel how good it feels to be present in your body. It's so delicious. You've arrived. Feel yourself energetically arrive. And choose to love your body. And then I want you to notice your mind now. Let's move to your intellectual self. And just notice what's going on in your mind. We're not trying to stop it. We're not trying to stop your mind from doing what it very naturally does. Just notice. And maybe for the purposes of really deep connection with your spiritual self for just a few moments, why don't you ask your thoughts to just take a little mini break? <laughs> if it helps, you can perhaps imagine a box and just gently swoop them up. I like to kind of imagine a, like a butterfly net <laughs> and I go around with my butterfly net and I kind of gently swoop up my thoughts. I'm not making them wrong. I'm actually giving them a little holiday and I swoop them all up and I pop them in a box and I go sit them on a park bench somewhere or a beach or I go put them somewhere that's kind of relaxing. And I tell them I'll come back to them very shortly. They have their place, but for now they're not helpful because now I'm choosing to connect with my spiritual self because that part of me is just as important. Mm. 
So I want you to love yourself enough to release your thoughts just for a few moments. Hmm. And feel the release, feel the pressure taken off. That you can have just a little break from your mind without making it wrong. And then I want you to choose to connect in with your emotions, your emotional self. And love yourself enough to notice how you're feeling. And we can have a lot of different feelings going on all at the same time. We can feel anxious and happy at the same time as feeling scared and excited at the same time as feeling utterly exhausted and so alive and energetic, it's quite interesting how we can somehow manage to feel so much at once. But we very rarely honour the truth of how we feel. We very rarely are that honest with ourselves, particularly around the tougher emotions, particularly around our sadness or our shame or our grief. Just allow that to settle. We're not going to do anything with your emotions right now. We're just honoring them. We're just noticing them with compassion. We're loving and accepting every single thing that we are feeling right now without any judgment. And just breathe into how good it feels to just sit at peace and without judgment of everything that you're feeling. Knowing that you're safe, everything you need is available to you in this very second. Because you're here, you're alive, you're breathing, gravity is holding you to the earth, oxygen is available for your lungs, you're here. You're okay. And we're just going to allow your emotions to be with such love and compassion. It's okay to feel everything that you feel. Oh, what a relief to know that. And I want you to remind yourself now the truth that you are not your feelings. You are not your thoughts. You are not your body. That is not who you are. It's your experience of your humanness, and we love it. And it's not who you are. It's not your identity. When we identify with our mind, and with our body, and with our emotions, it can be an incredibly disempowering experience. If you want to feel empowered, if you want to feel like you can trust yourself, if you want to feel safe, if you want to feel deeply, deeply, unconditionally loved, I invite you to connect with your spiritual self. So connect with that part of you. Connect with your spirit now. It might help you to put your hand on your heart chakra. Mm. Just put your hand across the middle of your breastbone. Breathe into your heart space. Just remember who you are. That's it. That's it. Just remember who you are. When I say remember, what I mean is to feel who you are. Feel it. You do know you might have forgotten for a blip of a moment. You might have forgotten for a number of years, you might have forgotten for a whole lifetime. Just take this moment now to remember who you are. And just breathe 
and enjoy the beautiful peace and connection being with you, being there for you right here, right now. There's nothing else to do. Nothing. Except to just sit and be in the presence of the majesty that is you. Just feel how honoring that is. So honoring. You are that worthy and that special. You are so deserving of this level of honoring. And it only needs to take a few minutes of the day. I'm going to wrap up this visualization now, but if you want to stay here, if you want to just switch off Facebook and just stay with your hands on your heart and just feel continually connected to your spirit, to just sit in that presence and just allow it and surrender to it for as long as you need. Please don't rush it. This is what's so powerful about it. Just sit and surrender to it. This is who you are. And I invite you to ask your spirit to speak to you. You know, inspired thought is sport is inspired thought is thought that comes from spirit. If you need an answer to something, from this space you can receive your answers. If you need to know how to trust yourself with something, it's from this space that you can get that guidance. So I invite you to sit here in this energy with you for as long as you need to. And then it's really beautiful to take a journal at the end when you feel ready, just to make some notes of what came up for you, what you remembered, what you realized, the answer that you were given. And please ensure that when you finish your meditation and your journaling, that you take a moment to ground yourself. And that can just be having a glass of water or a cup of tea and a little something to eat, a biscuit or a, you know, a snack, just to be grounded, just to make sure that you're not off with the fairies. Because even now I can feel my energy is so elevated. I don't feel grounded at all. So I'm just going to take a moment now. <sighs> to reawaken all of my body, roll out my shoulders, get reconnected to my body, to really feel my feet on the ground. <sighs> I actually am inviting my own energy back down into my body so I feel more grounded and centered and here for me. <sighs> when you're ready, you're gonna open your eyes. Oh, it's bright, hello. Hello, hello. Beautiful ladies. Beautiful, beautiful. So one of the meditations on my, my first guided meditation album is called Spirit. No, it's not. Oh, gosh, I'm still a bit off with the fairies. It's called um, <laughs> True Self, and it's 15 minutes, and it actually doesn't go through all the parts. It is purely about connection to your spiritual self, and it's quite a specific guided meditation um which is actually really really lovely so if you would like that then you can go check it out on my website the school of self love in the shop um but how do you guys feel after do, doing that there's a few of you still left on so i would love to hear how that felt for you how are you doing are you able to type <laughs> Or are you feeling a bit spun out and off with the fairies? I would love to hear, let me know. And uh, while you're typing just to, um, I guess I'm gonna wrap up. I think we've managed to hit an hour. I don't know how I do that every time when I think I've got nothing to say or it's a quick subject. <laughs> Boom, another hour's gone. Uh, but you've stuck with it and I just so love having you here. I really do. I, I love these teachings. I think they're so important and I'm so glad that you're receiving them. And um, 
and you know I say this at the end of every training what does Helen say relaxed I was emotional to start with absolutely Helen you know I find a lot of the time when I stop to um, settle into a meditation I I often find tears come first because it's almost like my nervous system is just so relieved to stop and to just love myself enough like the that self-honoring act of loving myself enough to stop to set the intention to just purely be there for me can actually feel quite overwhelming so much love is there that I would do that for myself and uh, as my nervous system kind of settles down quite often tears come and uh yeah and well that's what the tears are for are about for me and I don't know what they're about for you but love that part of you that's okay it's gorgeous um so as I've been sharing at the end of each of these teachings I am starting to talk to women about my six-month group coaching program which is called live louder we're kicking off very soon and I'm having those conversations if you want to take your self-love affair further if you want really really deep and powerful transformational coaching if you want to be witnessed by the coach, the expert, and by a group of other women, it's a very small group. It's a curated group, and it's only six in the group. Um, if that feels good for you, if you want deeper support, if you want to go deeper, if you really do want to transform pieces within you that you know are holding you back in your life in some way, um, this is a very, very powerful program, and it is a container of very... Um, deep and powerful and I keep saying deep and powerful it's like those words are losing their meaning but it really is deep and powerful um transformation if you know you're ready for proper transformation if you really are ready to live louder which is why I called the program live louder then uh, please let me know let's have a conversation let's find out if if it is the right program for you and um and let's get you on board because uh, we're going to start very very soon so I love you. Thank you for joining me for this really um, special conversation. And I can't wait to connect with you again next week where we are going to be diving into forgiveness. So for those of you that have been following the self-love affair journey, last week was all about emotional expression. If you don't feel complete with that yet or you haven't even begun, now's the time to, to do that and give it all you've got. Um, because that's the process. We need to be in the emotional expression phase before we can move into the forgiveness phase. Uh, so I urge you to go back to last week's teaching. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, or if you haven't begun to apply that work, then I really recommend it. And I'll see you next week. Okay. Lovely to have you guys here today. Love you lots. And uh, I'll speak to you next week. Bye guys. <laughs>